Bonjour, my name is David DeVere. I'm a wine educator and traveler, and you're watching Savvy Nomad TV, the Eau de Vie edition. This is my deep dive into travel journaling. This is episode three, and in this episode, we're going to talk about fountain pens. I am nowhere near a collector of fountain pens. I think I have four now, but... Uh, Definitely, I am not an authority. There are lots of authorities on fountain pens, but I do have something to say about it. So come with me to my desktop and I'll show you what, actually it's a bar, come to me to the bar top and I'll show you what I know about fountain pens. Okay, fountain pens. Now, why would somebody want to use a fountain pen? You know, I, I didn't really know. Um, I thought a pen's a pen is a pen. You know, ballpoint pens, pencils, they've always done me right. And I wrote in this book a lot with a ballpoint pen. No problem. It was great with a ballpoint pen. This paper was super smooth. I didn't really know anything about the paper. Well, this is Tomo River paper. Now, they're... Tomo River paper has been used in Hobonichis, like these, for many, many years. They are currently going out of business, but Hobonichi has sourced another company in Japan to create similar paper. Now, what's the deal with the paper? It's the pen and the paper together. It's like a wine pairing. It's food and wine. And sometimes when you put two right things together, it's magic. This was my first fountain pen. This is a Spalding fountain pen. It's got a cool um, wood cover, which I wouldn't actually suggest since if you get ink on this, it's gonna stain it, but it comes off. It posts nicely, it's light, and it writes good. I bought this, I think it was maybe, I don't know, a uh, hundred bucks or something, which was a lot for a pen, but I wanted something special, and I love this kind of retro look to it. It looked cool. So anyway, I bought this, and, I, and then I used it a few times, and I was like, on regular paper, notebook paper, and I thought, meh, who cares? But then I used it on a journal that Sarah's mom gave me, a homemade paper, some original paper. The paper had a very tight tooth. And this pen, when it wrote on that paper, it gripped the paper really tight. And I had this amazing tactile sense, this control over the pen that I never really had. For many years, I... I'm left-handed and I felt that my penmanship kind of suffered. It wasn't very good. I was, you know, maybe uh, a bit mm, self-conscious of my handwriting. And so this pen gave me an immense amount of control. And I thought, I started thinking, oh, is that why you use a fountain pen? Because of that feeling of writing. The writing was so good and so interesting for my hand, the feeling of the writing. I just wanted to continue to write in that journal. It actually led me to write in that journal. Now, I didn't show that journal in this series, but that's what changed my mind about fountain pens. So later on, I learned that when you write in a notebook, these are all ballpoint pens in here because I'm traveling and I thought a ballpoint pens what you want to travel with. I started back here writing in a fountain pen because, well, I wrote these notes much later and this is all fountain pen work. You can see there's a little bit of a shadow through the paper, but not bad, but this is very damp and so I needed blotter paper. Okay. If we open up my current Hobonichi, you'll see that I've had a piece of blotter paper in here, and it works kind of as a marker too. This one piece of blotter paper that I got from Jet Pins, a J. Herb Herbon uh, blotter paper that I cut to size, fits in my diary like that, my journal, just like that. And I've had this for six years. This is six years of blotting. 
and uh, it blots up the ink. Now the ink often gives you these wonderful kind of, uh, you know, shadowing. It gives you this tactile sense and shadowing. Okay, so fountain pens. That's why you want to use them. Now this is the fountain pen I've been using for six years. This is a Coweco Sport brass pen. I use it every single day. Part of a good Hobonichi habit is committing to writing every day. So I just do it with my morning coffee. I write all the yesterday's events that I can remember in the next day's journal. So, uh, you know, this is uh, Wednesday, and you see I haven't filled it out yet. I'll fill out Wednesday on Thursday. I'll fill out Thursday on Friday. You get the idea. So, Kueco Sport, it's brass. This is how it has patinaed over the years. And uh, I like this pen a lot. It's my favorite pen. It writes well. It's soft. It leaves a lot of ink. I like that. But there you go. That's one pen. This was my first pen, which I don't actually write with anymore. I don't really like the nib, which is this part here. It's a little bit too hard. Uh, this is a Y Studio pen. I quite like this design. I liked its facets. I liked how tall it is. And I love this big, heavy brass, almost inkwell that sits on the desktop. The problem is when it sits upright, you put it on your desktop. And I just wanted to whip it out, sign something, and put it back in. I thought it's going to work great for when I had people over and they could sign the, the, uh, the logbook. I teach classes here. Uh, and uh, they could sign into their class. And whoop, uh, the problem is, is this drips. <laughs> in fact, the entire nib fills up with ink. Oops, just got some on my finger. And um, it fills the well full of ink. So the first time somebody came over, they pulled it out. It dribbled all over the place. It's a big mess. Interesting look, interesting design. Not a lot of good execution. So that pen's, it's pretty, but I don't use it. This is my little pen box. And in here I've got extra blotter paper. I've got a whole bunch of little ink cartridges of different colors. I love these little tins that come from France. You know, I'm a Francophile, let's just face it. J. Herbin ink, this is a raw ink. You can use that to fill up a cartridge. Fountain pens and journaling, it creates a whole mystique, a whole thing for me. And I've got a little kit, I like that. It's a fun hobby. Okay, this is just my little box. Pro tip, don't travel with your fountain pen with a cartridge loaded in it. Carry an extra cartridge uh, on your person and uh, or two, depending on how long you're going to travel, and then put it in there. Otherwise, the, press, the air pressure will bleed out if you're on an airplane and you'll have a big hot mess when you get to wherever you're going and you whip out your pen to use it. Okay, so there's my current setup. Hobonichi, Kueko pen, an extra cartridge for travel, my arts and sciences leather uh, cover that I've had now for six years. I love this thing. It has patinaed quite nicely, but I'm going to the big a5 size five-year Hobonichi for the next five years. So I bought a cover for that. I'm going to do an unboxing in the next video of that cover and fingers crossed it will fit. We're going to find out together because I don't know if it's going to fit. I also have a new fountain pen that I'm going to start this next five-year journey with. So let's see. Okay. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And please consider subscribing. More content to come with wine and travel and France and canal boats and travel journals. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.